Singapore supports an immediate humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza to facilitate the urgent delivery of aid to affected civilians, said Second Minister for Foreign Affairs Maliki Osman at a G20 meeting in Brazil. We also call for the safe, immediate and unconditional release of all civilian hostages, he added, reiterating Singapore's position on the issue. Dr. Maliki was in Rio de Janeiro to attend the G20 foreign ministers' meeting from February 21 to 22. He also said Singapore is similarly troubled that tensions elsewhere in the Middle East have escalated, noting that the Houthi attacks in the Red Sea have impacted global trade and supply chains. Key sea lines of communications must remain open and secure, he stressed. The situation in Gaza was a key focus for foreign ministers' meeting in Brazil, with G20 nations broadly backing a two-state solution to the conflict. More than four months into Israel's military campaign in the Gaza Strip, the group of 20 leading economies voiced virtual unanimity for the two-state solution as the only possible solution to the crisis. Brazil's top diplomat Mauro Vieira told journalists, the meeting also touched on Russia's war in Ukraine, which enters its third year on Saturday, and the need to reform global institutions like the United Nations, which have struggled to respond to mounting conflicts, crises and polarization. Mr Vieira said various countries had reiterated their condemnation of Russia's invasion. But there was little sign of diplomatic progress. Calling the current geopolitical landscape very worrying, Dr. Maliki said countries should avoid returning to the Cold War where the world was split, warning that the relations between major powers have political and economic implications. Comprising major players from all regions, the G20 under Brazil's leadership needs to demonstrate that it is able to work collectively to galvanize support and build consensus what's de-escalating tensions around the world. He said. This includes urging all parties to refrain from taking actions that may have dire, unintended long-term consequences. He added that countries, especially those with the most influence, must be open to negotiations with support from the rest of the international community and that the outcomes of such negotiations must be based on international law.